Hello, it's Tamara Hunter, and today is day number 73 of 365 Days of Awesome. Celebrate success through service. And I have a good friend of mine, a dear friend of mine, actually my co-pilot on most of my journeys, and, um, and today's service hero, Renee Reich. Let me tell you why I picked Renee as today's service hero. Um, I met Renee not long ago. She'll tell you probably about that. And um, what I have found is that she is all about helping people to find their voice. And uh, with that, I'm going to let her explain what that really means. But it actually, I've seen it in action, and it really is impactful, guys. So welcome, Renee. Tamara, thank you so much for having me on your show. I'm really honored to be here with you and your audience. But before we talk about me or anything about me, I actually have a very special service hero with me too. And I didn't oh. tell you about this. So okay. don't at me. <laughs> I won't, but you know, let's fix it so that you we can see your name, but we can also see your face. Can you see There we face? go. You. Okay, because I want to see those beautiful pearly whites. Okay. All right. So, okay, so okay. my special my service special hero is actually you, Tamara Hunter. Oh. I know. I couldn't tell you about this because it's your show. But <laughs> I want your audience to know about my dear friend, Tamara Hunter, and what an amazing, amazing woman you are and what you're doing with Chemo Buddies and you are working tirelessly and I can tell everybody because I have been your co-pilot and we have had many conversations early in the morning and late at night and we've been side by side through it all and I have watched you literally nobody would know with the the, the energy that you have and that you put out here every single day with your service heroes what you have done and are doing tirelessly day and night so focused and giving up your life for this project, this passion project of yours. And I want everybody to know that, and you would not ever put yourself in the spotlight. So I am doing it for you. So please take this time and take your own stage. Well, thank you. <laughs> Renee, you, you are, you're something else, that lady of my friend, uh, you. Uh, so, I mean, you know, that kind of goes along with it, I guess, in that, you know, finding your voice, that's what you're so about and helping others. So. Well, thank you. I want to take that with graciousness and with humbleness and say thank you. Now on to you. All right. So you are a service hero. And um, I actually gathered some really fun pictures just because we have been on some really cool adventures. And the adventures we've been on are for a reason. We've been out uh, and she, it, Renee goes with me whenever they're in the Southern California area. And we have been out there meeting people that that are out making a difference, that have the ability to help us to get our message out there. And in this, she was snapped up. She was snapped up. I mean, and I think she has competition going on right now with a couple of them that they want her um, on board with them. Um, and so, but I want I want to kind of. I want to share a little bit and then we'll go round robin. Um, you know, you know what? Let's let's let you now. Okay. I you kind of took me off <laughs> off point. <laughs> well, Tamara, yeah. you know, I didn't think anybody else could do this but me. And I want I thought about it and I kind of put it out to the universe. And you don't know this, but like a few hours after I put it out there, you sent me a text asking me to be on your show because I didn't know how it was gonna happen, how I was gonna make this about you and then you sent me this that same day hours after i put it out there in a, in a voice i spoke it out there in my yeah. apartment i just spoke it and then you made it happen so thank you universe for helping me figure it out yeah, i, I well, didn't you. know about you tamra and i i know they know that you do the service hero but you really are one my friend you are a huge service hero you put everybody else on a pedestal every single day but you yourself are a huge service hero that you work so hard to make this happen, to make sure that nobody ever goes through cancer alone. It is because of you and your passion for people and your passion for life. 
that you have gone through this yourself and you want to make sure that nobody else ever has to. So wow. I commend you and I send you my love and my gratitude for everything that you do for others. It should be well, returned tenfold. Well, thank you. All right, now, now let's get to you. <laughs> okay, fair? I, I want to thank you. Thank you very much. The, the, very, very humbling. Okay, breath. And um, now, we're going to talk about Renee Reich. Um, I want you to tell everybody about why it is that you have such um, an affinity to share your story and more importantly, help people to find their own voice to tell their own story and to be able to um, empower themselves by connecting with their internal voice, but also in truth, their external voice, right? Why don't you tell us a little bit about that, okay? Okay, this is uh, being vulnerable, so here we go. So back in uh, 2013, I got pretty sick. I was, I was um, kind of shut up from the world. I had a virus called viral pharyngitis and it took my voice away and it made me a prisoner in my own home. I, I couldn't be with anybody. I was, I was working retail. I was with a Fortune 500 company for an extended period of time. And back in 2013, I went to work feeling really sick, but I was one of the senior managers closing. And, you know, being the way I am, I went in sick. I went into work sick. And um, I went out to my car that night. It was like one o'clock in the morning. I couldn't swallow. I, I was had chills. I was just really sick. And I, the next day I went to urgent care and I told the doctor, like, I felt like there was a sore in my throat instead of like a regular sore throat. And she said, yes, there is. There's one right in the middle of your throat. And then she sent me home um, because she did a rapid strep test. There was nothing, you know, no strep or anything. And the next morning I walk a bit, it's like it gave birth in my throat. There were all these sores, she told me, and I asked her how many. And she said, I'm not gonna tell you because I know you and you're gonna freak out. And she was right, I would have totally freaked out. But she told me to go um, to the ER. And my best friend who passed a year ago um, on the 19th in 2017, July 19, uh, 19 2017, she was with me. And she, um, she first took me back to her house and she picked up like socks, snacks, magazines, a blanket. I'm like, what are we going on a picnic? I have to go to the ER. But she knew how long the wait it would be in the ER. And she's also a former Girl Scout. So being that, uh, you know, background, she stopped and we got some things together. And she was right. It was a long wait. And the doctor examined me and he said that there's this, this virus. And he checked me for all sorts of diseases that I didn't want to talk about that I was like devastated. I'm like, oh, my gosh. But he... Um, he checked me out and he said I, I couldn't be with the public. And I was I was said, Am I contagious? He said, You're you're highly contagious. I couldn't be with my family. My voice completely went away. It wasn't just laryngitis, it was like no voice. There were sores all over that took it away. And I, the only thing I could think of, and I've never swallowed a steak knife before. I don't even eat steak, but the thought of swallowing, the only thing I can equate it with is is what a sharp steak knife would feel like to swallow because the, the pain was so devastating that when I swallowed, I had, I was crying tears down my face because it was so, so painful. And I would wake up in the middle of the night in, in just severe pain, not even being able to sleep. I would end up, this is a little, a little TMI, but I would spit out my own saliva because I couldn't swallow. It was so painful. It was easier to, to get rid of it than to swallow it. And it was just a devastating time for me. I, you know, I was, I was on AOL with my mom, instant messaging back in the day. I didn't have a cell phone to do any texting with her. Um, and it was just a really, really tough time. So somebody like me who loves to talk, who loves to speak, who loves to be with the public, literally was shut down from the world. And it was it was like, um, like being in a hospital room. I looked out my window every day from sunrise to sunset. And that's exactly what I did. I watched the sunrise and I watched the sunset. And I couldn't go out with anybody. I couldn't be with the public. I couldn't, if I were to go out, which was basically to get medication, if I could get anything, I had to wear a mask because mm -hmm. I couldn't be with anybody. It was just really devastating. I slowly started getting my voice back. At one point, they sent me to um, a specialist to see if it was permanent damage, if I'd ever speak again. So it was, yeah, it was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. And I didn't know if I, if I would. And that was just a, the, the worst time in my entire life that I could, I could, I can never imagine. 
my best friend was there for me. She would drive up my driveway with, with magazines and coloring books and, and food she would cook for me because she knew I wasn't able to take care of myself. So it's being the advocate that she was for me. And I know she's still with me spiritually. It's okay. I know that this is a, a tough subject for you. Yeah, you do. Um, but I want to be there for others. Right. And so you're taking you're taking that emotional and physical pain that you endured and you have now decided that you were going to help others. You know, we've got a lot of people that are, are I'm going to hide these names and I'm going to bring some people up because we have got some people that are, are with us in the house and they want to be able to say hi um, and give you a chance to kind of like breathe. Um, Tina Larson Hall, you know, lover, lover. We've got Shannon Hughes, yes. one of our favorites, and you know, a service hero himself. We have our ambassador that always is always here. Sharon, love you, love you, love you. And you know, Tina, thank you for the words. You know, you're just so great. And oh, we've got LA Lim, LA Lim, Lim Yo Flowers. Oh, Lim, oh my goodness. Hi, sweetie. Service hero himself. Oh. And, and you know, thank you for those words of encouragement, Tina. Thank you, Tina. You know? And and Sharon always knows what to say. We've got Rose in the house. Rose is uh, uh, she she is an amazing woman with a nonprofit doing things for the vets that have special needs. And man, I was on the phone with her today. Uh, amazing people, amazing people. I love, love, love all of them. And we've got, um, let's see, uh, we've got Jeremiah Knight. Hello. Thank you for being here. Yes, she is, isn't she? Well, thank you very much, oh, Jeremiah. Oh, you guys. Thank you so much. Um, and let's see, Lemuel is awesome. Rose is awesome. We've got some awesome people in the house with us. Okay, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to bring our names back up and get, and I'm going to actually, no, you know, I'm going to bring some pictures up. You have been, first of all, I got to show this one. This one's just fun. Uh, let's see here. We've got you and Beverly Hills on a Rolls Royce. How was that? for you to be turning all of the things that you've had go on to then know that you're going to go out there. You're going to share your story. You're going to help impact the world. And here you end up sitting on a Rolls Royce. How did that happen? Well, you know, seize the opportunity, right, Tamara? You know that. Timing is everything. <laughs> you know, the, the gentleman who owns the Rolls Royce, he was right there. And I, I you know, sat on it. He said, he said, Go, go for it. And then he sent me a message on Facebook and he said, I should have my own because RR and I'm RR, Rolls Royce and Renee Reich. <laughs> I don't so roll, but for now I'm sitting on one. Um, yeah, it, pretty incredible. He was very generous in letting me sit on his Rolls Royce. And so I, I, I seized the moment and I took the opportunity and I and I did. Oh, thank you. I got you. I got you. <laughs> Uh, so that was that was the Beverly Hills that that was um, at the gal at the uh, that we had, and there and then um, oh that's my one of the pictures that we took a uh, yeah Tom um, Tom Barrett if anybody needs a photograph that he he did a photo shoot with me at a la the last minute it wasn't it wasn't planned at all but he saw me and we were friends on Facebook and Messenger and he he saw me there and he said Renee. Come with me. I, I have surprise, and uh, we did a photo shoot that right then. Yeah. So. Yeah, and you know it's amazing how people are like that with you because you really have connected pe with people through social media, haven't you? I have. You, I have. That that's been really your forum, hasn't it? I mean, I now of course, uh, you know. Let let me just share, guys. Let me just kind of go through this because I mean, we've just this got is your so life, many. Renee. Oh my goodness. We've got we've got your different buddies that you've got. Yeah. Let's, um, some amazing. Uh, let's let's change this one up. Uh, I mean, is that in the gorgeous picture or what? Um, we have um, 
Now, tell us about this woman. Yay. Oh, Shay Vaughn. If anybody knows Vince Vaughn, this is his dear, dear mom, Shay. She is amazing. She, oh gosh, she and I connected back, oh gosh, it was a while back in Long Beach at the Best You Expo. This is an interesting, quick little um, story about this lady here. Oh my gosh. So I was looking for, she had gifted us, my friend and I, some tickets to the event at the Best You Expo. And my friend left and um, she went home. She lives in Redondo. And then I said, I'm going to stay. Well, I wanted to find this beautiful lady and thank her for the tickets. I had never met her, but I was walking around by myself and I saw her picture uh, up as one of the speakers there. So I'm walking around and this woman taps me on the shoulder and I turn my head thinking, who the heck could know me here? I don't know anybody. I'm not even my neck, neck of the woods in Long Beach. And she told me she liked the pants I was wearing. I'm like, oh my God, what's your name? She said, Shay Vaughn. I said, I've been looking for you. Again, the universe, crazy. I just walked down this specific aisle and this woman's tapping me. And um, it was her. And we just, you know, that, that right then she, we started talking. She sat me down. She asked what I want to do, what I like to do, and my passion. Ten minutes later, she was taking the stage, and she's sitting me down talking about me. She is just got the biggest heart. Remarkable, remarkable lady. I just adore her. I just adore her. And it's because of Shavon that actually you and I met, right? Absolutely. She, yeah. So she invited me to to David's event, the LA Icon. Um, after I met her there, she sent me an email, and there, oh, for, Tamara, you're good. Um, at the LA Icon Media um, meeting that he had up there in LA, and when I saw Tamara get up and speak, I went up to her immediately, and I I wanted to connect with her because there is cancer in my own family, and she did chemo buddies, and she was on one side of the, you know, the the room, and I was sitting in the other. But after that, um, her speech, I literally made a beeline right over to her. And we connected. Yeah, and we you wouldn't let me away from my my area. You like like you, you saw that there was only one way out for me to be able to go, and you were right there. Like, okay, you're not going anywhere until you talk to me. <laughs> Sorry about that, yeah. Dolly. <laughs> you know, I, I love that kind of determination. You know that. I I, um, I I found that out. I didn't know that. I was really just a shot in the dark. But I yeah. I, well, you didn't know that now then, but you now know it now. Okay. Yeah. And so then, um, let's see. We've been, uh, you know, let's just share a few more of these fun things. So you were rocking it with. I mean, we've got we've got Sir. You know, uh, we 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 got the person that's one of the people that's over, isn't it? Mo? No, not Motown. Um, one of the record labels. Yeah, then we yeah, have uh, Motown. Motown. Motown, and then we have uh, a knighted individual there, and we have a, a, a literal actor there, and there you are in the middle of them all. They're at the he's Beverly actually, Hills he's event. They're in Hollywood, I believe. It's all, oh, all to, my, to my right. Well, looking at the screen, it's my right. Your left, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I, I mean, just uh, amazing, and um. So let's let's and then just recently you got asked to go and interview. You were with uh, some beauty queens, right? And there I you go. Saying, You're right there styling with them. Look, I didn't I didn't even know I match her. Yeah, yeah. So you've been out there having some fun. Um, you know that was beautiful. That was on um, the Queen Mary, and it was huh? women of achievement that had done. The, the gal in the blue, really great lady. Yeah. Oh, and then, and then, oh, there's um, Christina Bloom Justice. She actually is blind. She's legally blind. Wow. And so I interviewed her. It's on my Facebook page if anybody's interested. You could see the interviews that I had done with these amazing ladies and their platforms. Um, I put it on my Facebook, uh, Facebook Lives that day because I felt it was. I, something I just wanted to share with everybody that these women achieve so much. And, you know, I really strongly believe, ah, oh, thanks, Tina. And um, in, you know, the, the power of having your voice, right. And um, these women just have such beautiful words to share about them. And I don't want to take too much more of your time, Tamara, with that, but they really have great, great stories and great platforms. And something else I don't have on my Facebook page because I 
wanted to you know protect the, the privacy of the veterans and you mentioned your friend with the veterans earlier i had the privilege and the honor to interview about i would say about three or four weeks ago some amazing vietnam world war one world war two veterans um down by where i live in the orange circle and there are stories i again i didn't post it just to protect them um and, and you know it wasn't my place to post it but what they have done it was just a day i will never forget i stood amongst them i i got to interview them and what they went through and they i was so honored that they were you know able to share them their stories with me or that they chose to share them with me i stood next to them then there was a, a flag folding ceremony and i was going to sit behind them they invited me to literally sit right next to them in that circle and i stood up i put my hand over my heart as i heard the star spangled banner being sung a cappello a cappella and the tears were rolling down. I'm an emotional person, I get them crying. The tears were rolling down my face because it just means so much to me to be you know, a proud American and to, to stand amongst them and then to fold, fold the flag military style with them right next to me and right across from me. It was very overwhelming for um, emotional and overwhelming for me that day. And I'm just um, grateful that I was able to be a part of it and, and share some of their stories and it again it's having having a voice and being able to speak your truth and speak your words and share it because no matter what people are going through you think your struggles are your own and yes they are personal to you so in that regard yes they are but everybody has something that is relatable to you in some way and you should know you are never alone no matter what it is and many people i'm getting emotional again don't want to share because they're embarrassed or they're afraid of judgment, but no one's going to judge us harder than we judge ourselves. So don't be afraid to speak up and speak out. And I'm here for those who need that helping hand. I will hold your hand through it all. I was fortunate enough and blessed enough to have my best friend be there for me. And I want to be that advocate for all of you. So what you've done is you've now become a coach and a mentor and a speaker and an interviewer. And um, your mission is to help. Um, oh, I want to share this real quick because I think you could use it. I know it's in your face, but there you go. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you Tina. Um, you know, your your mission is to really help people to maybe even identify what their voice is, because sometimes in what you've shared with me as we've had multiple hours to drive. Um, uh, we're in Southern California, guys. We may not as bird flies. Uh, -uh There's not much space. You know, it could, we could get there fast if we had one of those magic carpets we don't so we could be out on those roads for two or three hours and what should take a half an hour to get because it's called traffic so we have a plenty of time to talk and and when you're talking and you've been sharing and and going over what it is that you're really your mission what i have i have gleaned from the pearls of wisdom that i have gotten from you have been that when when you lost your voice, you actually found your voice, right? You're absolutely and right. That, and that sometimes when you're going through issues such as that, and we all, life happens, guys, right? And so what you like to do is be able to help people to go through, even if it's not a tough time, but maybe it's a reinventing time or a time of just discovery because many of us don't take those moments to be still and quiet with ourselves to hear our internal voice, right? And so you have exercises and you have a program and you've come up, you've worked with people over this period of time where you've been able to help people to do exactly that, right? Yes, Tamara, it's it's yeah, it's a journey, and you know what, you guys, I'm still on it. I think we all are, and even finding your voice and finding, you know, getting mine back, I'm still on my journey. We all are, and it's it doesn't end until it really does end, right? You know, so as long my mom always says, as long as there is life, there is hope, and everybody should know that. Like I said, you know, your struggles are personal to you, and then I do understand that, and mine was very personal to me 
Nobody could tell me anything. When I was stuck in my house for three and a half months, like a prisoner, literally, just I just can't even imagine that that happened. But it it, it was the, the most devastating time, as I've said. And and the fact that God was gracious enough to give it back to me, I know there was a reason that I lost it, and I was able to get it back. It didn't just happen for no reason. You don't just get that that sick for such a period of time where you have to be with yourself. Um, when you're so used to being out with everybody else, people told me to slow down, slow down, Renee, slow down, breathe. And I never did. Well, you know what? The Lord above helped that happen. And he forced me to slow down and stop and breathe and take stock of my own life and look at myself in the mirror when I really didn't want to. And I was forced to. So, um, that's how that's how that happened. I know there was that lesson in there, and I just want everybody else to know. Yes, Coach the World. I am on Coach the World. I see Tina saying Coach the World. I'm on Coach the World. It's a beautiful platform um, that people can sign up for. There's different amazing coaches on there. If you're looking for um, anybody to, to do coaching or mentoring, if you go to coachtheworld.com, it's definitely a great platform. I am on there, and I'm happy to help anybody who wants to sign up and, um, you know, I'll help them out. Uh, but that's what it's about. It's, it's, you know, people helping each other out and being there for one another and knowing that you're not alone, no matter what kind of tough struggle you go through in life, that it is, again, your personal struggle, but you have people who love you and who really, really care about you. When you think the world is closing in on you, it's only you who's closing in on yourself. Open those doors allow those windows to open and open your heart because there is a life out there for you to live and love and enjoy. Wow. World words of wisdom, definitely from someone that really knows her internal and external voice. Don't you do a lot of writing? I do. Wow. Tammy, you're just, a, I do write. Yeah. I actually, um, I've, posted a, a few articles on LinkedIn. Um, one was my very first one was on gratitude. Um, but I also do a gratitude journal every single night. Um, some people do their gratitude if they do it at all in the, in the day. I give thanks when I wake up for sure. Uh, but I do it at night just before I put my head on my pillow because I want to think of things that at least five I put down. Um, and I did actually a Facebook Live. My very first one got the most hits was on gratitude also. Um, and I al always write down at least five things I'm grateful for. If you can't think of five, think of three. Think of one, for gosh sakes. There is something in your day that you can be grateful for. And I do it before bed because it will kind of relax my mind. And, and no matter what happens in my day, even if it was a fabulous day, it's more to be grateful for. Put more on your list. You can never have enough gratitude. Uh, but Tamara, you've been in my journal quite a bit. I don't know if I ever shared that with you, but you are in there quite a bit because I'm very grateful having you in my life because had you not pulled me along with every every time I'd get this call or this message, Renee, come with me, come with me. I'm like, it was like Lucy and Ethel on the, on the, uh, the freeway. She would always drag me with her. Come on, come on. We're going. I'm like, we're going to LA. I'm like, what is it? She goes, well, we're going to this event. We're going to that event. I'm like, okay. So uh, it, I don't. And you I, asked me, and I would be like, I don't know. We're just going. I stopped questioning her. I really. I said, "What's it about?" She goes, "I don't know." But you're coming with me. I said, "Okay." Yeah. Yeah. You know what, you guys? That's called trust. It's called trust when you trust enough in the person that you're with that you don't have to question. I did. I questioned them when she said, "I don't know." I'm like, "Okay." I didn't care to know. All I knew. Is that I trusted the woman who I was going to be hanging with and spending time with, and she would never leave me leave me astray, and she never has. So when she says, "Renee, come with me," you know what? I seldom ask. I go. I just want to know what do I need to wear? What kind of event is this? And I go. answer. <laughs> yeah, I, I stopped asking questions. I'm I'm always full of questions. I stopped because I love you, Tamara. I trust in you. And I just simply adore you and I support you in everything you do, all your endeavors. I just, just pray for you for, for goodness and, and graciousness to be bestowed upon you as you bestow it on so many every single day. Thank you. Okay, back to you. But thank you. Thank you. All right. So what I want to do here is we, we 
I'm, I am starting to have people because you, you are giving so much and, and, you know, I'm going to speak for you or you can, you can add to this, but you know, one thing I see that you do do, and I really love that gratitude, you, you know, from the very beginning, you actually shared it with me. You even have apps and all sorts of neat things that I didn't even know were out there. And you were like, oh yeah, I just read that. Cause I was showing you my, the journal that I had created. Um, and, and I think what you just brought up would be a really great, um, give, and that is to not necessarily challenge, but to give the idea of before you go to bed, if you have not done this yet in your day, it is to write down the three to five things that you're grateful for, right? Gratitude, right? Yes, absolutely. I really encourage people to do that because it really makes you take a look at your day and what you have to be thankful for and grateful for and people be grateful too. And it may not be something that happened to you, but something that you witnessed, like being grateful that something happened to somebody else that you were able to be part of it. You know, um, it may not be about you, but if you were around that person, you made something happen. I'm grateful that like, I'm grateful right now that I was able to put you on a pedestal today on your own <laughs> show. <laughs> I'm grateful that I was able to pull it off because I'm like, oh God, I hope she's not gonna be mad at me. But I wanted to recognize you on your own platform. Uh, because why would I be mad? No, so I don't know, because you I wanted to turn it around to you and I didn't want it really to be about me. And I figured who better to do this than your your PIC, your partner in crime, um, on all your road yeah. And I figured if anybody could do it, it would be me. So um yeah. so I did. Well thank you. Thank you, my buddy, my partner in crime. All right. So now um, what I've been allowing for people, not allowing, but what I've been um, the platform here because of going to so many of these wonderful events that we've been invited to. We have been learning about how you give first, but then after that, you're allowed to ask. So if you were to ask this audience, this wonderful group of people that are supporting the 365 days of awesome, celebrate success through service, what would be the thing that Renee Reich would ask? Wow, Tamara. I ask that you support my buddy Tamara Hunter in her Chemo Buddies for Life nonprofit organization. That's my ask. How very kind. That's that's very kind, you know, it in giving and having such a giving soul, it's going to come around so much more than than you'll even know, Renee. You know, I want to say thank you for being my partner in crime. Thank you for being such an amazing example to me. You know, you came into my life and I want to share something I'm going to hide these names here for a second. I want to share something that that my wise ambassador from the buddies program. Um, Sharon, uh, and who is actually kind of a sister because her mother adopted me. <laughs> you know. Um, oh, thank you, Sharon. I thought that that was really sweet, and um, and so I wanted to share that. And how sweet, Tina. Thank you. Um, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Well. We have had a delightful time. I am so happy that we were able to highlight you and in in the process you yes, you you did sneak up and highlight me and thank you very much. You know, um it's it's, your pleasure. It's, it's it's my honor actually and I have been so honor filled and so grateful to be sharing platform with people like yourself and and the others that we've been able to to visit with um you know i i want to i want you guys to all understand i'm going to be finding out more about it today but you know since you did some you know some uh sharing of stuff that's uh you know kind of like out of the blue if you will the buddy i mean the the uh, the buddies i have two programs guys <laughs> you know please I'm, yeah and i'm 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 not used to having things turned around on me like this so renee you got me um the the 365 days of awesome celebrate success through service program 
is actually going to be highlighted here soon. And so I will be sharing more information. I would like to be able to tell all of those that have been recognized as service heroes that I will be finding out more details this afternoon. Um, but we will, but how, we, I'm trying to get rid of that word. I really, really got to, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, you really did. I, I, I'm not usually like this. Um, we will be getting more information. And in September, uh, the 20th and the 21st, I believe, in the LAX area, I don't know the location yet, we will be actually honored. All of the service heroes will be honored. And we will also be getting, believe it or not, a magazine, a quarterly magazine that will be highlighting each one of the service heroes um, and why it is that they were chosen. I am beyond floored over this and I am excited beyond belief because I believe all people really need to have these messages in their lives because in today's world there's so much of you can turn on just about everywhere and you're not getting this uplifting kind of work that is truly being done because as as all of you that have been watching these shows see these are people actually out there making a difference many times on a very daily basis and on an ongoing like yesterday our our guy barely sleeps right you know um jamie so i i want you to know that we will be having a digital magazine and you'll be able to catch up on all the service heroes it will be quarterly i am so excited and um so renee good things are yet to come oh uh, yeah. thank you my friend thank you so much tamra for everything you are an amazing human being i really am blessed to have you in my life to know you and and to be your 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 buddy, your your carpool buddy, your partner in crime, and the person that helps me not get lost, <laughs> which is amazing. This girl gets lost really easy, <laughs> and, and she has to be. She's oftentimes on two apps trying to figure out. Okay, what do we do now? And we still have. She's great though. Only a couple times have we had adventures. My yeah, kids yeah. know that it means we've gotten the loss a couple times but it hasn't been her fault <laughs> all right okay, well yeah, right. if i'm gonna get lost with anybody it's okay i'm happy to get lost with you well we always make it fun we no do, matter what always. it's always fun because life's too short guys you gotta have some fun gotta laugh a lot amen yes um i want to uh recognize uh, we have uh, a new friend of ours that says cheers. I love it. How classy is that? Very yes. cool for Milo. And, um, and I hope I said your name correctly. If I didn't, please forgive you me. You did. You got it. You oh. it perfectly. Oh, good, good, good. Okay. So we're going to close up on day number 73. 73. It's just amazing how time is flying. Um, and... I want to say thank you, Renee Reich, for being my uh, partner in crime, for being my friend, for seeking me out and not letting me pass without introducing yourself. Uh, you have made my life ever so fun, and and I have learned so much about really connecting with your internal voice, thus really working on your external voice and i thank you for that lesson and those ongoing lessons they're they're amazing and i know you're helping many many do the same so if you know what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and ask if you want to know renee more renee is an amazing coach woman person you know that that is available right now uh she's got a program that she's putting together and I think what she's been doing is she's been uh, using some of the experiences of the people that she's currently coaching to help to get her message that much more um, nailed down to then go on a viral 
go, you know, the digital platform, because believe you me, uh, this is something so needed. So if you're looking for a coach uh, to help you in a way to connect with your voice, possibly you're an upcoming speaker, possibly it's she really works with people in the corporate uh, arena and she is in Southern California, Let, but don't let that fool you. She is very good, I know, in tracking anybody down <laughs> and so she can do that on a digital platform and so you feel like you're in the room with her. I know that too. So, um, you know, if you're looking for that, I really suggest uh, she's not she doesn't have that many slots open. In fact, I know she has very few. But just recently, she let me know that she was thinking of opening a couple of them. So if this resonates with you, get a hold of her. She's on Facebook. She's on LinkedIn. Uh, she's a social media queen. So you'll find her. Uh, she is uh, helping uh, Eric Zuli and the Easy Way family. She goes and interviews for them. Uh, she's out there in many different ways. So if you see her somewhere in an event, pull her to his side and say, hey, you, I'd love to, you know, do you still have a slot open? And if you don't wait too long, possibly she will. All right. Well, with that said, I want to thank you for your time. I know we've we've been going on but it's been fun and uh, I really was taken back so guys sorry it's a little long but I feel like we've had two service hero tributes here today and and um, and I thank you for that Renee it was very very uh, humbling for me and something I will never forget so I want to thank you for that gift so go out there and make it an awesome day. Remember tomorrow in many, many school districts, school is starting. If it's not your school district uh, starting, they will be. So please, one way of sharing and showing service is in those school district areas. I know we're supposed to be aware of the signs and slow down, but kids are excited. They are so excited. I mean, I had my little kindergartner and three uh, third graders come over today and show me their new haircuts. They're so excited to be starting school. And they don't always, I mean, the little kindergartner, I mean, I actually had, his mother was on the other side and he's running out and, you know, he was running behind the car. And I just thought, okay, I need to, I need to end today in saying, be aware the kids are excited and they're going to be running all over the place. So if it's a school bus stop, if it's a school zone, if it's your neighborhood and you know that school is starting, please be on extra alert. Please slow down. And if someone's beeping behind you, just let it roll off your back. It's a moment in time, but you may be saving a child's life. All right. Thank you. All right. Make it a great day, everyone. I will see you tomorrow from Vegas. Bye.